Hi, I'm Nate from Bright Agritech, and uh, in the previous video we talked a little bit about what kind of pesticides we apply in our greenhouse, what kind of things we do to control our insects. This, uh, right now I'm going to talk about how we apply those. So managing your pests is a big part of uh, growing in a greenhouse like this or growing, even growing in a home garden. And uh, whether you're applying soap or whether you're applying a worm tea or whether you're applying an actual chemical that you bought at the store, they're all technically pesticides. So uh, knowing how to apply them and when to apply them is really important. So in the previous video we addressed some of the things that we like to use in our greenhouse. Um, now I'm going to talk about how we put those things on. I'll start off by saying that it's really important that you apply stuff in the evening or early in the morning. You don't want to do it any time where there is heat or a lot of sunlight. We prefer to apply kind of right about now. It's about twilight and it's going to be dark pretty soon and the plants will have all night, um, you know, for the uh, whatever we spray on them to be on the leaves and then hopefully in the morning a lot of uh, kind of the, you know, either the water or the oil or whatever we're putting on um, is hopefully uh, gone by the morning or if it's not gone it's it's not there's not as much of it as there was the night before and this reduces burning so if you spray say mid-morning or in the afternoon uh, when the sun is out a lot of the time you'll see your plants kind of die the leaves will burn and uh, they'll die and that's just because the sun is um, you know those leaves are either drowning underneath the oil or the water or sometimes water droplets will actually uh, concentrate sunlight like a little magnifying glass on the leaves. So it's really important that um, you apply these late at night when you give the plants all night to recover. So before you spray anything, and I don't care what it is, I mean you can be spraying baking soda and water uh, for all I care, but if you're breathing that stuff in it's not necessarily good for you. So uh, I recommend some essential equipment for any kind of spraying. And again, it doesn't matter if it's a worm tea or a homemade soap and oil or whatever. Um, I recommend safety, some basic safety equipment. You know, um, a respirator is always a handy thing to have. It just makes sure that you're not breathing any any of the uh, particles. Gloves, uh, just to kind of keep your hands clean. And when I spray, I like to wear these, uh, essentially these these suits to kind of keep it off of my clothes and keep it off of my skin. Um, again, a lot of people will say, oh, well, I spray harmless stuff, I don't need all that, you know, safety equipment. The reality is, is, you know, a lot of these things that are natural, that are wholesome, that are perfectly fine, are still not the kind of things you need to be breathing in or getting all over your body. So, um, I do recommend this equipment and safety goggles, of course, if you're spraying. The next thing you need is a little garden sprayer. So, um, this is basically what we use in this greenhouse. It's about a $20 special. Here I'm going to plug Ace Hardware. I'm not making any money off of that, but I'm going to plug them anyway. <laughs> they make some cheap spraying equipment. And um, we use this in our greenhouse and it works really, really well for us. Um, in here I just have water. Okay, so this has been rinsed out. There's, there's nothing in here at this point. It's just pure water. Um, but these little sprayers are really nice. They're not very costly, but you basically just kind of pump them to pressurize them. And then, um, you know, your sprayer will, will uh, just spray a little um, spray a little mist. So they come with a nozzle that you can adjust the uh, spray on and everything. It's pretty handy. So the next, uh, the next thing to know is how much do you spray and how do you spray? So even though the controls that we use here are, um, are really safe, at the same time we, we're very careful to follow the label. So um, if, you're, if you're spraying a home remedy then you know, my advice is to start small and get big. So if you're spraying a worm tea or something like that, uh, to try and control your pests, spray a little bit to start because all of this stuff will have an effect on your plants. Spray a little bit, see how it affects your plants, and then kind of up your dosage. For everything else, anything with a label, you basically just want to follow that label really closely. So anything you order is going to come with really crystal clear instructions. And um, the stuff that we use is rated for greenhouse crops. It's all OMRI organic, rated for greenhouses. And we follow the instructions to a T. Okay, you don't want to mix more, you don't want to mix less. It's actually illegal to mix more or to mix less. Okay, you are required to follow the labels. And um, that's for some really good reasons that I won't necessarily get into right now. 
But um, the nice thing is that they come with instructions. You mix according to the instructions. So many, uh, say, tablespoons per gallon is often um, what they, the, the uh, dosage rates that they give for small greenhouse growers. And uh, you basically mix it up and then you apply it. So the other thing to know with a lot of these is there is what's called a re-entry interval. So that basically means that after you spray, you don't want anyone in the area, no one should go in there, uh, you know, until it's had a chance to, to do its thing and the aerosolized uh, part of it is gone or the fumes or whatever you're, I don't know what you're spraying. But um, you basically want to read that label and find out what that is to and keep people out of your greenhouse for that time period. So the label on these uh, is also going to tell you how much to spray. So sometimes the label will say just wet the wheat leaves. Sometimes it will say spray until it drips off of the leaves. It really just depends on what you're spraying. So one of the things that we spray, it's called uh, Mycotrol, and it's just a fungal spore. So it's a fungal spore in water. Um, that stuff, you know, you're supposed to spray to a certain extent, but you're not supposed to spray until it drips off the leaves because at that point, you know, all those spores are just kind of running off of the plant. You're just supposed to spray it until the leaf is, is wetted. Um, other things like, uh, say, this Pyganic that I'm going to spray tonight, um, you know, you can spray it until it, it drips off the leaves. But it's important to read the label, read the instructions, and make sure you're doing it right. Not just to be safe, but to make sure it does a good job at killing those aphids or those white flies or whatever your problem is. So in closing, I just want to um, harp on the fact that you need to read the label, make sure you're doing exactly what it says. Uh, whether you're spraying um, pyrethrin or whether you're spraying something homemade, just be really careful. Make sure that it's not going to hurt your fish, okay? So make sure you read the blog post on Vertical Food Blog to see how to kind of figure that stuff out. Um, some of that stuff we'll have listed for you over there and just kind of tell you how much is safe to spray. Um, and uh, other stuff you're just going to have to do your homework on. And again, remember that all systems are different. So some systems will handle it just fine and some systems won't. So use caution, use your noggins, and uh, just be really careful with this stuff. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the uh, Vertical Food Blog. And if you find this uh, useful to you, please subscribe to our channel. And trout probably aren't appropriate. B, you want to look at your feed sources. You want to figure out what kind of feed sources are available to you.